In this diagram, we are asked, what is the total power developed by the following circuit? So to do this, we have to remember that we are going to be finding power. And what we actually need to remember is the formula for power. We're given voltage in amps. So we are going to set our power equal to our voltage times amps. And this is a formula that we looked at back in chapter one. If you want to refresh on that, link for the notes down below. All the notes covered for everything in the previous chapter and last chapter. So we have power is equal to voltage times amplitude. From the first chapter, we know that if we draw a circuit like this, we need to have power being delivered. So this is just P subscript D, and we need power being absorbed, P subscript A. And for our circuit to work, we know that they have to be equal to each other. So whatever being delivered is going to be the same that's being absorbed. When we draw this, we see that our amp is going around our circuit in this way. Just like this, it is going around to the left side. So when we do this, we are going to separate these. We know that voltage is plus minus, and we're looking at this part in our circuits. In doing that, we know that our voltage goes into the positive and out of the negative. And if our current follows that, that means we're going to get a positive value. So to have our sum of power, you're going to set this equal to the power being delivered and the power being absorbed. So we're actually gonna have a sum of power delivered and we're gonna have sum of power absorbed. And remember that both of these have to equal to each other in the end. On top of remembering that these both have to be equal to each other in the end, we also have to remember that the power being delivered is going to be a negative and the power being absorbed is going to be a positive. So when we look at this, we have to keep that in mind. First thing we're going to do is look at our 10 volt one, this right here. We're going to look at the 10 volt part. Since our voltage and our current is going in the same direction, that means this is going to be a power absorbed. So it is going to go down here. We are going to have 10 volts times 5 amps and then we are going to look at the next one which we can just do 50 volts we'll look at 50 volts next so looking at 50 volts we are going to see that our voltage goes from our positive to our negative which is also in the same direction as our current so to this we are going to add this so we're going to have our 50 volts times our 5 amps and in doing this we are going to get the value of 300 watts because power is represented in watts and voltage times amps is watts. Now for the power being delivered, we look at this 40 voltage right here. So we can see that our voltage is going from positive to negative, which is in the opposite direction as our current. So we are going to have our 40 volts times our 5 amps. However, since it's being delivered, we have to have a negative sign up front. Now. This is, only, this is only going to give us the value of negative 200. And we need this to be equal to negative 300 because the power being delivered has to be the same as the power absorbed, just negative. That means in here, we need to have another negative 100. We have our five amps right here. However, we don't have the voltage for it. So we have the amps, but we don't have the power. In here, we're going to first write our amps. We have 5 amps, and what we can do is divide this by 100. That means we need to have 20 volts. So we'll have 20 volts times 5 amps. This gives us negative 100, so now it is equal to negative 300 watts. Since our mystery voltage was in this part right here, and that part right there was negative, that means our answer is going to be this negative 300 watts. And that's how we do this problem. Test test put ow i'm cutting it out okay ready set and go